Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to take a quick look at how to make an animated water effect using the own one sprite shader by Seaside Studios. This is a package I bought quite a few months ago, but I figured I'd come back to it to show you some of the effects that you can do. So this is not a full review, I already did that. This is showing you one effect which you see in front of you right now. Don't worry, we will recreate this from scratch, I just want to give you a preview. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because if you go to their demos that they include with their package, so they do show you that there are many color effects. You can see the wheel spinning around. There are many UV effects. Again, you can cycle through a whole bunch of them. And then there's these combination effects. So this is just that these are not new individual effects this is like a meta effect by combining several together so that's my one minor gripe is they really don't let you automate this you have to do it yourself so if you were to click on one of those so-called combined effects and you come over here to the inspector and you expand out the all-in-one sprite shader you'll see that it's just a bunch of effects, which means if you want to do that effect, you basically have to, I don't want to say reverse engineer, but you have to come into here and see which effects they use and what settings they use. What I prefer is if they actually had a third category, just like the demo shows, that says things like burn and water. And if you check that, then it automatically backfills these for you with presets. And I don't think it'd be that hard to do. Again, I'm not trying to be petty. I'm a big fan of this. But considering that this is just one of many things that a developer would have to learn, it'd be nice to see this automated. So that's just my two cents. So we're going to take a look at one of those automated effects. So let's go ahead and just do new scene. And then we'll just quickly create to recreate that river we we're just looking at so we're going to take a plane put some grass on it and we'll just expand this out Let's take our camera, move it up, have a look down. Slide it over, try to center it. Well, it's a little bit close, but that's okay. We'll just copy the plane, slide it over. And doesn't matter the exact location. I'm just trying to create a little context because seeing the water effect without any surrounding is less impressive. So I want you to get a sense of how this would actually look in your game. And so then we'll just create one more plane. We'll put the stone on it. We'll lower it because it's meant to be the riverbed. See how that looks. Pretty good. Not perfect, but doesn't have to be. Just increase the tiling here so the rocks don't look quite so stretched. Okay. And so now I'm going to add the water. So I do want to point out that these, the grass and the gray stone, these are both texture type default, whereas this is going to be a sprite to use the sprite shader. So what we can do is you can just drag and drop that into the scene. It'll automatically make a sprite renderer. Okay. Need to rotate that 90, I believe. And then we're also going to make this a little bit bigger. So let's just make this two by two. And remember, it's a sprite, so that's why it wasn't Z, it was Y to make it um, deeper. And we'll just lower this since it's meant to be, it should be lower than grass. And just keep in mind, obviously, you would fill in the sides here with an embankment or something like that. I'm just, again, I'm just trying to put a little context. So this is what I was talking about, about combined effects. So 
to use the own one sprite shader, you go to add component and you'll see there's a category called own white sp uh, own one sprite shader. And you choose that component and then you expand out here and here are the multitude effects. Again, this is not a full review. I'm only going to show you the ones that are for this effect. So we're going to apply some translucence so you can see the stone under it now. We're going to add a wave effect. So this is basically just creating like a distortion. So let's just, and it's, it's kind of hit or miss. It's kind of um, guess as far as what would work and what doesn't. If you want this to be like a gentle river, then obviously most of your numbers are going to have lower magnitudes. If you want it to be really turbulent, then you're probably going to have to use higher magnitudes. Okay, so if we run that, you can see it's kind of just waving about. And now what we want to do, we want to add offset, I believe. Nope, texture scroll. My apologies. We want to add texture scroll. So it, says, it does exactly what it says on the tin and that it makes the text texture scroll. So what's going to happen is this is going to be lined up with another and another one. So as it scrolls down, because there's a duplicate here, it gives you the impression that it's scrolling and scrolling and scrolling when in fact it's just scrolling in place. It's actually a great illusion. And we don't want it to be on the X. That would be left and right. We want this to be on the Y axis, but we want it to be slow-ish. There you go. And you're almost done. So now we're just going to duplicate this. Now, in your game, you're probably going to have a script that is going to instantiate the world for you. So you're going to have like an if statement that uh, chooses a bunch and a bunch of X and Z coordinates to place these tiles. But I'm not going to go through all that because I'm just trying to make a simple demo for you. So I'm just going to copy and paste these. So I'm, I'm sure someone is going to point that out in the comments. And I just want to mention, yeah, I know that you, you wouldn't merely do this. You'd have this be instantiated using a script. And now we just copy. And I believe it should be exactly five over. And then another five over from that. Depending on the size of your image, your numbers may vary. Okay, so the side uh, links up together nice. And just because I feel like being lazy, I'm just going to slide this over so it covers that up. Okay, so now what we can do, I'm not going to do the whole riverbed because you already saw the final result at the beginning. But we will fill this in a bit. Thought I had a negative 15 already for some reason. Actually, I will be very close to completely filling this in. All right, that should be good enough. So there we go. So that's how you make an animated uh, water effect. And it's a really nice effect. And you can actually keep building on this. Since these top ones are translucent, you could add a, another sprite layer under this that's also translucent. And maybe it would be like a series of circles. And so it looks like shadows, how, how you'd have like these kind of uneven shadows casting in the water. And then you would have those maybe move a little bit slower. So you really get the sense because water obviously is not solid. So it's fluid. So you wouldn't expect it to move evenly. So you could have like the shadows on the bottom move slower. So... That's about it, really. So I hope that you found this useful. If there's other effects you'd like to see done using the all in one sprite shader, please let me know. Again, I don't know if this is still being actively developed. The last update was about two and a half months ago. 
and uh, I do know the developer watches the channels. He's made a few comments about the previous video, so maybe he'll see this and give us an update as to what is going on. But again, I think it's a great value. You have a ton of effects for just $35 USD. If you're making a turn-based RPG, I think that this would be a must because there's just so many effects that you could use for a battle system. So anyways, uh, if you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and a comment if there's something you'd like to see. And please do enjoy the rest of your day.